Thailand's anti-military political alliance has chosen its candidate for prime minister. Its and rising political star, Sanaton Junrang Rangkit. He will face off against incumbent leader Prayut chan -ucha in tomorrow's vote. Mr. Tanoton is leader of the opposition Future Forward Party. Despite just being formed last year, it came in third in the elections in March. But the young billionaire faces at least two criminal charges which he insists are politically motivated. And it's unclear how that will affect his prime ministerial bid. Succeed Saya Sambat with more. It will be the first time since 2011 that the Thai Prime Minister will be voted by Parliament. This also marks the return to parliamentary politics ever since the military coup of 2014. In that time, the military government has rewritten the rules by passing a new constitution, which will also affect the PM vote. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the current state of the coalition negotiations. Things are not still clear yet, even though it's been over two months since the country went to the polls in the first democratic elections since that military coup. What we do know for certain is that there is an anti-military bloc, a so-called democratic front, consisting of seven different political parties, including the Purtai Party and the Future Four. But as you can see, they have not reached the majority yet of 251 seats, just shy of a couple of votes there in the 500-seat parliament. Now. On the other side, things are even less clear at the moment. We have the faction that wants to continue the current military government, spearheaded by the political proxy, the Palang Basarat, and they are supported by a bunch, uh, over a dozen of smaller political parties on the bottom here, but they're not adding much to the pile here. Uh, what could add a lot to the pile are these two big parties here, the Democrat Party and the Boom Jai Thai Party, with over 50 seats each. They could be the kingmakers, but they still would not fully commit themselves to this bloc yet. We understand the reason for that is that the haggling over cabinet seats is still ongoing and might drag out until the very last minute. But if these parties would join that bloc here, it would put the pro-military faction at the majority, although very, with a very small margin. The difference to these two sides would be just four seats, and that would be a pretty dicey affair to govern in parliament going forward, especially if you have a mega coalition of 80 different political parties. But the vote for the new prime minister will be held in a joint assembly between the 500 elected MPs and 250 senators that have been all appointed by the current military government. So 750 in total, and we have reset the graphic to reflect that, 750 in total, the majority line on the red dotted line here would be at 376. Now, it is very likely that the 250 senators that have been all appointed by the military are going to vote together for Prayut Chan Osha as the next Prime Minister, it will make for a very lopsided affair. The pro-democracy front on this side here is being practically dwarfed by the other side on this screen here, putting them well above the majority line with a comfortable lead, even if you would take away the 100 plus seats of the Democrat Party and the Boon Chai Party. And that is because of the new rules that have been put in the Constitution by the military government in the past few years in order to ensure the continuation of this military government after a democratic elections. And by all accounts, it looks like that General Prayut Chan Osha will remain the 29th Prime Minister of Thailand. Saksit Sayas Ombat, CNA, Bangkok.